Welcome to Toy Hill Studio. My name is Kendall Kessler. I'm going to do another demonstration painting. And this time, in the spirit of Halloween, I've decided to do something a little bit on the macabre side. Um, look closely at the lines of this rather sinister face. It's not going to look real gruesome, but it is going to be sinister. And just look at the lines before I get started, because I will be talking about that as I work on the painting. Not sure what I'm going to do. I, I never am with these demo paintings, these very expressive paintings. But I am going to get real colorful and use a lot of line and really get into some real strong expressions. I'm also going to be using some black. I don't normally use black in my work. Like a lot of colorists, we're not really into neutrals. We like to just use violets when it's real dark and just get in to all the different values and intensities of colors and not what we call neutrals. As I said, I'm going to use some black, which is uh, not something I normally do, but I'm going to really use that to really emphasize the real strong colors that I'm going to put on this painting. And as always, it's going to be the first layer, and then I'll work on it more as I get off interesting thing about these demos is I really honestly don't know what I'm going to do until I do it. I'm not doing what I normally do, or what my main work, I should say, it's not normally, but my main work is um, more like representational, pretty much the way things are, of the Blue Ridge and surrounding areas. But when I do these, I just really, really get into some of my own type of expressionism, and it's real fun. I really like to do this. But uh, to do it all in one sitting is just not for me, so that's why I always stop and then finish it off camera. But I'm going to really, really get into some real, what we call zonky color systems. One of the, uh, the best, in my opinion, that did macabre or scary, whatever you want to call it, artwork is the 19th, 18th. 19th century artist Francisco Goya. If you've ever seen the movie Goya's Ghost, you saw some very, very fascinating work that he did um, towards the end of his life. Um, he worked for Charles IV and was a court painter for Charles IV. And he developed a very, very bad disease that left him stone deaf. And he retired to a house that he called La Quinta del Sordo. Spanish for Home of the Deaf Man, and he started painting on his walls. Really macabre, strong images that have been carefully taken off, which is amazing to me if they can do that, bit by bit, and are in the Louvre. They're really, really fascinating Louvre. What am I saying? Prado. Boy, I did teach for 20 years, but you know, getting up there, and sometimes I make some really dumb mistakes in the Prado. And I've seen them. They're, they really are fascinating to do these right on his wall. You know, we don't really know if he was just real bitter and just making really gruesome images of people in the countryside that were very ignorant witches and ghoulish looking people. Or if it's just painting. You know, you never know. But uh, to put them on his wall, that is kind of weird. But I guess he figures it's my walls, so I'll do whatever I want to do with them. I've always thought they were the strongest macabre images ever. And they're not like what was artists were doing during that time period at all. They're very much like the early part of the 20th century Western artists were doing expressionistic work, which is essentially what I'm doing now, my own version of it. But basically that's what this would be considered to be, expressionistic work. And these paintings that he did in the early 18th century, early 19th century, were um, very much like those. So people like to say, well, he's ahead of his time. Well, you know, I think people like to pigeonhole artists too much. I think that a lot of us are capable of many, many different expressions and think that uh, oftentimes people really just get into some kind of serious explanation and they kind of overdo it. But that's just my opinion. All right, really like getting some violet right through there. I think that's very interesting. Just winging it. 
I'm not sure. I might even add kind of hair stuff on the side. I'm not real sure what I'm going to do with this one. But just thought it'd be nice to do something different. And this is real different for me. Now I do have some macabre images, or you know, what a lot of people consider to be macabre images, and some illustrations I did for my husband for his book, Fiddling at Midnight's Farmhouse. And you can buy that on Amazon. And in those, yeah, you know, I would think that some of those would be considered um, macabre type images. I'm starting to think those come out in a very interesting way. The uh, one thing that they teach you a lot in school, if you ever take go, and, go into any kind of art, is that people tend to really flatten out the nose area and they don't build it up enough so it kind of sticks right into the face. So I'll be doing more of that when I uh, get to the next layers. Right now it does look like it's kind of sticking a little bit into the face. But uh, the perspective. Perspective is so important in art and a lot of people when they first start out, as I've said before, they just really get into all this detail stuff and the, in the what they're putting detail on is flat and stiff and really haven't learned a lot about perspective and contours yet. And that's uh, what we work hard to teach art students. Now I for many years taught a lot of art of priest students and it was really important to me to try to explain art because when I talk to people about art a lot of them have ideas that are just um, they, they just don't really understand what it's all about um, and it's, it's very frustrating so I worked really hard and one of the things I did that I thought worked out fairly well that I think a lot of students that helped a lot of students understand art better is I did a real macabre image, something like this, in just some very delicate thin little lines like this was at the beginning. And then I did one with real heavy, dark lines, jagged all over the place, to try to get them to understand that the difference was, they're both the same, it was both the same drawing, the difference was you're supposed to feel it more in those real heavy lines, in that real jagged expression. And I would always, you know, make sure they understood they didn't have to, that uh, people really do respond to art in very different ways. So I'd always say, you may not. You may say, well, that one's got jagged lines and that one's got thin, delicate lines. So what? It's still a mean looking face. So it, you know, it's all depends. It all depends on how you respond to visual images. But that was, that's the reason that a lot of artists will do that, is they're trying to get this real intense expression that's not what it is so much, but how it's done. They're trying to get you to sense it by the use of the real strong lines and textures and jagged edges. And that's what we call expressionism. Can't help but teach some. I did it for so long that in all these YouTubes, I, I just can't help it. <laughs> that's what I did. And I got a lot of compliments. A lot of compliments, a lot of high rating from students, which is really nice because a lot of them were very surprised. And that was great. A lot of them would tell me, you know, I didn't really understand much until I took this course, and now I have a much better standing, much better understanding of art. And that was, that was a real nice pat on my back because it is hard to explain these things. And as I said in another YouTube, the only real way you can understand is you got to take up art. You got to do it for a while, not for the five minutes that most people do when they try to draw and they say, oh, I can't draw. Now you got to really, really spend some time. And then after a while, you stop seeing it so much as making copies of things in front of you, but as making something creative on the surface you're working on or with a piece of sculpture. And it becomes a whole different experience. And that is what I did too. I did have students do that and uh, also had them do the linear perspective so they'd understand how you know real strong detail is not all there is to getting things look right. You've got to get the pr proper perspective. And I remember one math student just loved that because linear perspective is math. It's a math that's closely akin to geometry. And this one math student just flipped. He had never done any linear perspective and he just thought that was fascinating. And I do too. I'm not the greatest in the world at math, but I uh, do like math and I, I d have deep respect for it. I mean, where would we be without math? I get real irritated when people say, what do I need to learn algebra for? I've never used it and I'm an adult and I never used it. 
Well, you know, if you go over a bridge, <laughs> if you use your phone, calculus, I mean, yeah, you use it all the time. And where would we be without it? But a lot of people, they just, they just have this idea that it was so ridiculous that they had to use it. Well, okay, if you're in high school and you haven't decided what you want to do with your life yet, and then you get to college and you say, hey, you know, I think I want to be an engineer. Well, guess what? Now you're going to go back and take those courses that you could have taken in college, in high school, and then you would have been more prepared for college. Oh, well, you know, I guess being a teacher was a very good thing for me because I have the greatest respect for knowledge. And I think, unfortunately, more and more, I think we're getting away from that. I think a lot of people are, I, I, I'm seeing this in many different aspects of our life, I think in politics. I'm not pointing the finger at anybody, but I think a lot of people are just not going by knowledge in their decisions regarding politics. And people are not thinking about the past, history. I really get irritated when people think they don't need to learn history. Well, I, that's why we repeat the errors, because people don't think it's important to learn. So we repeat these errors over and over again, which we might not repeat if people had a good working knowledge of history. Boy, I really am lecturing this time. <laughs> oh, well. Ah, I think I want to stop it right there. You can see where this is going. I really like it. I think it's really fun, especially for somebody who doesn't do a lot of macabre. This is a real fun experience. Not so sure I'm going to use a lot of black. I said I was going to, but I think I'm going to probably be putting in the dark areas with some real strong purple. I truly am a colorist. Thank you for watching. The link to the final painting will be in the description as are other links to my work.